An extremely important area with inside wireless communications is obviously power. Power defines the intensity of the wireless signal. The more power that we have, the longer the distances that we are likely to be able to reach. But also, we need to understand what the, elect the power is in the face of any human contact, because we need to make sure that the output power does not breach any regulations. Obviously the frequencies that we're using, typically about 2.4 GHz, can actually have an effect on the human body in the same way that a microwave oven can. So we need to make sure that the power emitted from an antenna uh, and in the face of a human is is less than what it it is defined with inside the regulations. So what we have is power and obviously we use uh, amplifiers to be able to increase the power or even decrease it and that's in terms of the gain. So the gain of a system is typically defined as the power out of the system divided by the power in. So if we have one watt of an output and we have 0.5 watts input then we have a gain of 2. Normally, when we take a system uh, in its elements and with gain, we have to multiply each of the elements together. And that can be quite a difficult calculation. So often we define gains in terms of, in terms of decibels. And in this case it's 10 times the log to the base 10 of the power out divided by the power in. So we take two simple examples, and these are good examples. If we double the power, then we take the log to the base 10 of 2 and multiply it by 10 and we get 3 dBs. 3 dBs is a double of power. So if you find an amplifier with a 3 dB gain, it means it doubles the power. Half the power is 0.5 times the input power and that gives us minus 3 dBs. Okay, so in this way, again, of 1 actually gives us a gain of 0 dBs. And it shows the, the power ratio that we have. So as we said, a gain of 1 gives us 0. A gain of 10. Uh, the log to the base 10 of 10 is 1, so we get 10 dBs. If we looked here, we would see 2 would give us 3 dBs and minus and point, point 0.5 would give us minus 3 dBs and so on. So 100, when we take the log 10 of 100, we get 2. It's got two zeros in it. So we take it from there and then we get 2 times 10 is 20. A thousand is three, so we end up with thirty, and so on. Where this comes in useful is that if we can actually define everything in terms of decibels, then it's easy for us to be able to calculate the overall gain. So in this case we have a gain of 20, gain of 0.5, and a gain of 0.9. In this case our amp we're amplifying our signal, and then we're losing some signal in our cable, and then because of the joints that we have between the cables, we also get what's called the mismatch loss. So we're losing about 90%. We're, losing, we're reducing to 90% here, we're reducing to half here. So we need to understand the overall gain. So one way to do that is to multiply the three things together. So we get an overall gain of 9. Or we would define that as, as 5.54 decibels. The other way of doing this is that we cal can calculate an amplifier would be defined in terms of decibels, gain here, and then the gain there, and we just have to add the values together to give the overall gain. In this case, both values end up the same. Often in wireless, when wireless communications, we will take the decibels, and it's the decibel values that will allow us to easily calculate our power output. 
often when we talk about uh, wireless communications we don't talk about watts because that would be much too high a power uh, and it would be dangerous to humans so we often talk about milliwatts uh, a maximum signal is often about 100 milliwatts from a standard wireless access point so what we do is we, t we define our power in terms of dBm's or dBs in terms of milliwatts so we take our value and then we just divide it by milli 10 to the minus 3, we take the log and that will give us our power in dBm's so we take 1 milliwatt that's 1 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by that we get 0 dBm's 10 milliwatts we get 10 dBm's and then so on so it's very easy for us to be able to calculate in terms of its relationship to uh, 1 milliwatt ok so this shows an example of, uh, of an amplifier here here we have 100 milliwatts which is actually 20 dBm 100 is 2 times 10 is 20 and we have a 30 dB amplifier so we increase by 13 we then have a 3 dB loss so we reduce by that so then we end up with 30 dBm that's 30 dB is above this 1 milliwatt and in terms of power that gives us 1000 milliwatts ok so in this case we can actually calculate the values from here let's look at an example now so we'll take a simple example obviously 1 milliwatt is going to end up with 0 dBm's and it does and minus 30 uh, dBmW's so let's actually prove that on the calculator so we have 1 exponent 3 minus divided by 1 exponent 3 minus equals 1 of course then we'll take the log ends up with 0 multiply it by 10 and we're all going again and end up with 0 so an example that we have here is 53 so we'll take 53 milliwatts divided by 1 milliwatt gives us 53 now we'll take the log to the base 10 of it and then multiply by 10 ok so the value we get for our dBm's is 17.2 which is what we get here so hopefully if we try this here 53 uh, we calculate our dBm's then we get 17.24 and then we get minus 12.76 we can prove that in terms of our dBw so we'll take our 53 again exponent 3 minus this time we don't divide it by the 1 milli because we're calculating dBw's so we'll take the log of that and now we'll multiply that by 10 and there we get 12 minus 12.7 6 when rounded up which is this value here ok so 100 milliwatts can you guess what that's going to be 20 of course 1000 milliwatts is actually 1 watt so hopefully what we'll see for the dBw is 0 and we get 30 dBs in terms of the dBm's ok so that's shown how we can convert into DBM